Hi, Steve here. I have got some just mind boggling information. And it's not anything in the news that you've heard, but it's something from the Bible that I read in Ezekiel and the parallel between Israel and the United States and the message that Ezekiel was bringing to Israel at the time about their destruction and it blew me away. And the similarities, the so-called coincidences between the message that was given to Israel by Ezekiel and what's going on in the United States, well, it may blow your mind like it did mine. I've got to tell you what this is. I've got to share this scripture with you. And then something Jesus said that also blew me away too with what's going on right now in America. So I want to share this with you. I want to share this information with you. You decide. You decide if there's any parallel. Now, I'm always the guy that always says, don't ever take the word of God out of context. And I believe that. And that is a, that's a rule. That's a ground rule for if you ever want to understand God's word. Never, ever take it out of context. You know, so many people, they read a verse and they go, that's the doctrine. There's no doctrine by one verse. You have to take the whole Bible as a whole. You have to take the whole New Testament as a whole and understand that the Word of God says that there's no, no scripture that's uh, of any private interpretation. So, you know, these people that take one verse and they make it a whole doctrine, and that's why we've got all these different denominations. Okay, you gotta take it in context. But let me get back to what I'm talking about here because just listen to what the book of Ezekiel where Ezekiel was given this message from God to talk about what was going to happen to Israel and why. Now, it was because of their sin. Now, if you're a left-wing liberal, you don't think there's any problem in America. You think everything's great and everything this president's done is great, but God doesn't think that. And the same way he didn't think about what was going on in Israel at the time was great either. But listen to what Ezekiel said to the Jewish people back then and see if you don't see the parallel and the mind-boggling coincidental wording that describes America today. If you want to follow along in your Bible, you can go with me to Ezekiel chapter 22, starting in verse 23 uh, to the end of the chapter, which is only till verse 31. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, Say to her, he's talking about Israel, you are a land that is not cleansed or rained on in the day of indignation. The conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They've devoured the people. They've taken treasure and precious things. They've made many widows in her midst. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They haven't distinguished between the holy and unholy, nor have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they've hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths so that I am profaned among them. Does that sound like America? Calling the unholy things holy and the holy things unholy? Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey to shed blood, to destroy people, and to get dishonest gain. Her prophets plaster them with untempered mortar, seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, thus says the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken. The people of the land have used oppressions, committed robbery and mistreated the poor and needy and they wrongfully oppress the stranger. Now listen to verse 30. So far, it sounds just like America. The leaders, they called them princes back then, they were the leaders, but our leaders, our politicians, they've done the same thing to the poor and the needy in America. Now listen to verse 30. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me 
on behalf of the land, that I should not destroy it. How important is the wall? And they tell me it is absolutely vital. And in the, the other words, it's a vital tool. It's an important tool. It's maybe the most important tool that they can think of. We're going to build the wall. We have no choice. We have no choice. Now the next part of this verse. Ezekiel told the Jews, the Lord said, but I have found none. I looked for a man that would stand in the gap and build the wall, but I found none. And I believe that now in America, God has raised up this man. And this isn't political. I'm not talking anything about politics. Just forget that. Get that out of your mind. I'm talking about the uncanny, unbelievable similarity between what Ezekiel told Israel and what's going on in this country right now. Is it a coincidence that the wording in this is to build a wall? So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy, that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. Build that wall! Build that wall! Build that wall! Build that wall! I believe this is a message from God for this country. We have an opportunity right now at least it looks like we have an opportunity. And if we have a choice to actually put a man in the White House, a leader, who will stand in the gap for this country, who will build a wall, it's talking about standing in the gap for righteousness sake, for caring about the country. At this time it was Israel. The message was to the Israeli people, the Jews, from his prophet, God's prophet Ezekiel. But I believe right now we have his word. And I believe we have an opportunity to say, yes, Lord, spare our country. We have a lot of people praying for this country because we know, we know we're in serious trouble. I'll tell you, I'm going to be honest. I believe that if we don't help elect the guy we need in the White House who's willing to stand in the gap, this country's done. We'll be destroyed just like Israel was back in that time. And it won't be pretty. Now I know there's a lot of people who are going to watch this and they're going to say, Steve, you're just a, a radical right-wing fanatic for Trump. You just This is all political for you. No, it's not. None of it is political. This is the Word of God. And I'm reading the Word of God exactly as it's written. Look it up for yourself if you don't believe me. Why am I saying this? I believe when I read this that God put this on my heart to get it out, to put it on a video so you can see it. And as for as many people as who do watch this, I want you to think about it. When Jesus walked on this earth as a son of God in a man's body, a lot of the scribes and the Pharisees, they accused him of doing things by the power of the devil. Because he was doing things they'd never seen before and they weren't able to get past the fact that he was doing good things for people, breaking their little laws and their little rules. But doing good should always supersede whether we're breaking a law, doing good. But he said something to him when they accused him of casting out demons from people by the power of the devil. He said something in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, Jesus said, every kingdom or every realm 
divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, or the devil, by whom do your sons cast them out? So they'll be your judges by what you just said. He said, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. And then he says this in verse 29. How can anyone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house? Why do you think this administration is trying to take away guns? They say they're not, but they are. They're trying to destroy it. They, Obama has written so many laws to try and remove the weapons, remove the ammunition. I, I'm not gonna get into this about Obama right now, but here's the point. Why would you try and take away Americans' right to defend themselves against the original Constitution of when this country was formed? Simple because you bind the strong man by removing any way he has to defend himself. The point is, America is being slowly destroyed. And if this scripture is a parallel truth that I was supposed to tell you in this video, you need to think about it because it's very, very important. If God raises up a man, think about this, or any man, it just happened to be Donald Trump. And I know he's abrasive in some ways, but he's still not evil. And he's still not done the things that Hillary Clinton has done. If you want more information on that, look at some of the videos on this YouTube channel about what Hillary has done. The point is this, if God's raised up a man and given us this opportunity to put this man in the White House to save our country, to spare America from the destruction that will certainly come, then why wouldn't we do it? Thanks for listening. Think about it.